In this video, we want to look at creating an array inside of Java. So arrays in Java is pretty simple and familiar to a lot of people if you're used to C and C++. We have here our public static void main function. And just inside of this, I'm going to go ahead and create an array. The way we create an array is pretty simple. We're going to say something like int, and then we'll have square brackets. And I'll specify a variable name kind of like this. Now, in this case, we're going to create an array of integers, but we haven't defined how big it's going to be or their values or anything like that. There is another way I can create an array of values as well. This time, let's do it using doubles. I'll specify double, then dbl array, then put my square brackets after my variable name. Both of these are valid. While these two both create arrays, which one you choose will be dependent upon your preference and or the coding styles that you're required to follow. Now, I can also define array and declare its initial size. So to do that, I'm going to create first an array of strings. So I'll say string, str array, and my square brackets. Then I'll use the assignment operator equals new string and I'll specify in this case 10. Now in a case like this I'm creating an array and defining a block of strings that I can use for my array. In this case I'm using a string object so I can have an array of primitive data types like integers, floats, doubles, longs, etc. Or I can have an array of objects, whether it's something like a built-in class, like an array of strings or dates, or something that I've created and we'll see later on. So either way, these are common ways I'm going to build an array inside of Java. Now let's take our array of integers. It doesn't have a value, it's not defined at this point, so we need to now give it some values. So I'll specify int array equals new int, and we'll simply specify 5. A lot of times in C++, we would use a constant to specify the size of an array. That's because in C++, we don't have an array size, but in Java we do. So we don't have to specify a constant. I'll show you how that works in just a minute. First, let's give the elements of this array some values. So I'll specify int array, and then I'm going to start at an index of zero, just like I would in C++. I've put in there five elements, just as I specified five. Indexes zero through four. If I try to put in an index of value of 5, notice that it's going to let me when I'm writing my code. However, if I come to run this, I'm going to get an error in my exception, specifying that my index 5 is out of bounds. Remember, that's because my index is start at 0 and go to 1 minus the size of my array. So I'm going to remove this real quick. So now let's use a for loop in order to go through the elements of my array, printing them out one by one. And specify int i equals zero. i is less than, or we're going to specify int array. And we're going to say dot length. Dot length is a built-in property that lets us know how big our array is. By specifying less than length, we get the indexes 0 through 1 minus the length. This way we don't have to use like a constant like we did in C++. It just makes it a little bit easier, especially for big projects that have lots of arrays in them. And then we'll do our modifier, and now we'll simply print out my array elements.
Now if we run this, we see our index of i, 0 through 4, and we get a chance to see what the values at the index are. So just a real simple way of how to create some arrays, how to give it some values, and then we use a for loop to go through our array using the property of the arrays to make it easier to work with them.